We continue to face a grave situation in Iran where our embassy has been seized and more than 60 American citizens continue to be held as hostages in an attempt to force unacceptable demands on our country. We're using every available channel to protect the safety of the hostages and to secure their release. Along with the families of the hostages, I have welcomed and I appreciate the restraint that has been shown by Americans during this crisis. We must continue to exhibit such constraint. Despite the intensity of our emotions, the lives of our people in Iran are at stake. I must emphasize the gravity of the situation. It's vital to the United States and to every other nation that the lives of diplomatic personnel and other citizens abroad be protected and that we refuse to permit the use of terrorism and the seizure and the holding of hostages to impose political demands. No one should underestimate the resolve of the American government and the American people in this matter. It is necessary to eliminate any suggestion that economic pressures can weaken our stand on basic issues of principle. Our position must be clear. I am ordering that we discontinue purchasing of any oil from Iran for delivery to this country. <laughs> Jimmy Carter, wow, what a what a thing. What a what a uh, what a comment. You heard that last comment. I'll just play that last comment one more time. I am ordering what? Of any oil from Iran. Purchasing of any oil from Iran. Ordering that we discontinue purchasing of any oil from Iran for delivery to this country. Wow, uh, very revealing, right? What is he talking about? So let's try to understand the, the, the sanctioning oil, right? Sanctioning oil. Oil. 1980. That's Jimmy Carter, ghost from the past. Jimmy Carter, President of the United States in 1980. Let's try to understand Iran. Let's try to understand what's happening now. You have Trump declaring war and then saying, no, 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 I was only kidding and uh, pulling off the table. But now they're, they're creating this other type of war, the cyber war, right? It's all in the news. You got my, you know, John Bolton saying, oh, no, 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 no. American resolve sounds just like Jimmy Carter at the, at the time. Right? And here's the thing. In 1980, right, when Jimmy Carter was, was saying this, right, what, what happened was, it's, it's a long-evolved story, and I hope that I can explain it <laughs> in a way that is, uh, is coherent and such, uh, so that you walk away at least knowing what's going on in Iran. And w w what, what happened was, at 19, in 1980, when Jimmy Carter was uh, actually running for re-election, it happened in 1979, I believe, seven, 19... Uh, 80, yeah, 1979, right? So four, um, for 444 days, uh, Iran held 66 hostages, American hostages, mostly diplomats in the Tehran uh, embassy, and were demanding stuff, right? They were demanding, it was a revolution, right? The, the, the Iranian revolutionary whatever um, under Ayatollah Khomeini came into power. They ousted the Shah of Iran. Right? But that's, that's how did the Shah of Iran rise to power, right? How did he maintain his power for all those years? And that's where it gets ugly. And that's where it gets into the reason why we should never intervene in foreign policy, foreign governments, and regime change wars. Because guess what? The current situation is our doing. I know a lot of people say, oh, little Conti's blaming America. Look, oh, fucking, he's a socialist. He's blaming America. Just, just listen for a second. You'll find you'll you're gonna learn something, right? So, so the so the name that comes to mind, right? We got to roll the tape back to the 1950s. We've got to go 20 full years ahead of the the um, Jimmy Carter's speech. Jimmy Carter coming into the presidency and then ultimately losing to Reagan, who then, you know, that was the Iran Contra thing where they gave weapons to get the hostages back. And Reagan was able to, to somehow finagle that, right? But here's the name that comes to mind. Listen. Right. 
که هر وقت با مشکلی روبرو می شود به منبع قدرت و سرچشمه لایم no idea what he's saying but man does this sound good right? so who is he? Who is he? مصدق ah. say it again say it again مصدق ah, مصدق Mossadegh. Who the hell is Mossadegh? Right? Mohammed Mossadegh, 1951 to 1953, was the prime minister, the democratically elected prime minister, democratically elected in the time. Right? We think of you know Iran is a bunch of terrorists, bunch of uh, bunch of religious kooks, a bunch of you know savages. Right? That's how the American press. Oh, the savages! They fucking hate us. They want to blow us up. Right? They, they're 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 organizing their their military. They're building up nuclear arms to blow us up. But what are they? What are they really? What is the real issue over there? I'm right? seeing false flags go off left and right today. Today, right right at this moment in time, over what? Over what Jimmy Carter said, right? It's oil. It's the price of oil. Right? That's the that's the the root of the cause, right? And and, and hence. Why you would want to go in the direction of a, a green energy platform, solar, wind, right? That's, that's a different story. Right now, we're in a situation where big oil will suck every drop of oil out of the ground to, before a, any change will come. But let's talk about Musa, Muhammad Mossadegh. Right? Was the, this, the prime minister of Iran during the 1951-1953 era. Right? He came to power. And what was his crime, right? Ultimately, he was. Let's look at uh, let's look at Wikipedia, right? So he was the 1953 coup d'état orchestrated by the Central <laughs> Intelligence Agency. So he was he was ultimately uh, he was a democratically elected uh, prime minister, and then in 1953, the intelligence uh, the CIA and organized with with uh, the Brits to oust him. It's so reminiscent of what they're doing in Venezuela, right? But when, when people say, oh, Venezuela is a coup and it's a CIA, everybody says, oh, no, no, that's conspiracy theory. No, it's proven. It's, it's, it's a known fact. In, 19, in 2013, under Obama, uh, the CIA released uh, un, unclassified those documents, and we know exactly that the CIA ousted uh, Mossadegh in 53, right? Ultimately held him in jail for three years, uh, he executed a lot of his cabinet. It was a bloody. It was a bloody thing that they did, right? So you say to yourself, "Well, well, well, what was the result of that? Wasn't he a bad guy? What did he want to do? He was elected by the people, and what was he going to do? He's going to become a, a supreme leader of terrorists. Uh, listen to what he did. Listen, listen to Mossadegh's crime. An author, administrator, lawyer, and prominent uh, parliamentary. His administration introduced a range of social and political measures, such as social security, land reforms, and higher taxes, including the introduction of taxation of <clears throat> the rent on land. <clears throat> His government's most significant policy, however, was, get this, nationalization of the Iranian oil industry, <laughs> which had been built by the British on Persian land since 1913. That was the... Um, Anglo-Persian Oil Company, A-P-O-C-A-I-O-C. Uh, that's what it was about, right? Because he wanted to, see, the, the Brits had, a, had as the Brits always did, they had a lease in Hong Kong and got kicked out. They had a lease in India, they got kicked out. And they also had this, this uh, the British Empire had, had this deal in Iran where they would, uh, they would they, they'd take care of the oil for you. Right? The, take care of the oil fields. I know you got a lot of oil. We'll give you some money, and we'll take care of everything. Don't worry about a thing, right? We got this. We got this, right? That was the Brits. What the Brits said, and when most of that came to power, he said a lot like what Maduro and uh, Hugo Chavez said in Venezuela is that no, we want to take the oil and let and 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 nationalize it so that the people can benefit from the resources under their own goddamn feet, right? Not a radical idea. If we had it, certainly we would do it too. Uh, we would, we would, we we wouldn't nationalize it, but we would certainly hope that the wealth would would. Well, we wouldn't do that because we're we're you know it's 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 uh, unfettered capitalism, and somebody would steal those those resources and then tell you, no no no, work harder, and someday you'll be rich. <laughs> That's the American way, right? 
but the but Muzadek, a, a great leader, rises up from the ranks and and is trying to nationalize the oil. Uh, so, and and again, well documented. Here we go. O- Operation um, Ajax, right, uh, was a CIA uh, operation to oust Muzadek, along with the you know the Brits. So it was a coup d'état, and um, again, it's it's not it's it's. It's psychological warfare. At that time, it was actually a a, a, a real coup d'état where they imprisoned him. But today, it's it's um, you know you're seeing it play out again in Iran. Right, so why did why does why did the Iranians hate us? We we overthrew their democratically uh, elected president, right? And then power shifted once he was once he came to power and had power. It then shifted to the Shah of Iran who then appointed a different prime minister who took the Brits and the Americans back under their wing and everything was everything was uh, fine in terms of the oil flow right so 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 then for 20 years right the people are pissed off they don't they're never going to forgive the United States and Britain for overthrowing their net democracy what about democracy how how does how does the United States look into the eye of the camera and say America is a great democracy of freedom and, and rights, and, and you have it playing out today. You've got, you've got John Bolton and, and Mike Pompeo saying those exact words, right? that, that we're, we're such a, a fun-loving, freedom-loving people, uh, you know. and it, it's just a big lie. So then in, in what happened was under the Shah of Iran, for 20 years, Right from a little less than twenty years, seventeen years from two thousand, from nineteen fifty three when Mossadegh was ousted, all the way to the time where the Iran what's it called the Iran Iranian um, revolution right the Iranian um, yeah some kind of revolution right happens into in in um, nineteen seventy nine right and they oust they oust the i the the uh, Shah of Iran and replace him with the religious kook, uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini, right? And that's pretty much what you have right now. You have an extension of Ayatollah Khomeini, which is, which, which again, the Iranian people chose a a a social social democracy in the fifties, right, where they were moving in the direction of social security, same direction we went, right? But when Iran tried to do it, oh, then then the U.S. has something to say and overthrows the government. That's the tragedy. Mossadegh is is widely uh, acknowledged in Iran as a great leader, and the Iranian people have never forgotten that intervention, that U.S. intervention that continues to this day. So, so that was so that I hope that's that's a. But look at some of this is interesting. A propaganda video. Check this out. In the nineteen fifties, nineteen fifty three, Persians revolt. Listen. Attention is focused once again on the Middle East, where events in Iran have taken a dramatic double twist. Forced to flee his palace in Tehran, the Shah and his queen arrive in Rome after an alleged attempt by the Imperial Guard to arrest Dr. Mossadegh and a refusal by the Shah to dissolve Parliament at Mossadegh's request. In Tehran... So the Shah, the Shah was... It, this is the, the way they're telling the story. The Shah, when they were ousting Mossadegh, Right when the CIA, they already they had the plan. They were going to oust Mossadegh and give power back to the Shah. Right, so the Shah gets on a plane and hangs out in in uh, in Britain. Right, right while Mos- while they while they they're rounding up Mossadegh. This is Mossadegh here. Yeah. It looked as if Mossadegh would soon be named president, and on his orders, troops occupied the Shah's palaces and surrounded Parliament. And then the people themselves took a hand. Three hundred killed and hundreds wounded is a conservative estimate. The rioters freed those taken prisoner earlier and stormed the house of Mossadegh. Foreign Minister Fatimi gets through. First reports that he was torn to pieces have not been confirmed. Meanwhile, so you see how they how they portray they're projecting the 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 imagery in the fifties that um, that people wanted they wanted the uh, the Shah and not Mossadegh. It's just. I mean, it's just propaganda video. It's just a cool video to watch. So Trump uh, is, is it, I, I, my point is it's still playing out today, right? It's not about Muslim terror. 
It's not about a nuclear threat, you know, Iran. It's not about um, the spread of Islamic terror in ISIS and Al Qaeda. It's about it's about the resources that they have and rightfully own. Now, you could make an argument that, well, they let Britain in and Britain built up their oil empire and showed them how to sell their oil, but it doesn't necessarily... Uh, it, if, if Britain had the power on their own right to oust Mossadegh right, and, and disagree that their country was about to take back their oil resources, they could have done something on their own merit. But no, instead, the United States, what business did we have? Well, we do have a business. It's the oil business. To go in there and help Britain uh, fight their battles. Now, the, the battle is not even fightable for Iran because of the power of the United States. Uh, they're going to, they're going to, the sanctions, but the actual military flying drones off the coast, uh, you know, accusing them of things that didn't happen, the false flags, that's what it is. Manufactured a consent so that when we finally attack, right, uh, uh, we could say, oh, no, 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 it's because they shot down a piece of uh, equipment in the air, or, oh, no, no, that was them, they, they, uh, they, magnet- they magnetically stuck bombs on the side of the uh, tankers in, uh, in their backyard. Uh, they did that. That was Iran. Uh, so, so this is just an article that talks about how Trump is using his secret. I mean, Trump, to his credit, didn't bomb I- Iran recently, right, because he feared that he would kill 125 people, right? But he declared war and then said, oh, no, no, I'm not going to declare. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. That's, that's not... That's not Pulling, oh, how smart he is! He 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 di- he di- um, <clears throat> he got us out. He prevented a war from happening. He prevented a war. No, he started. He almost started a war. It's like the mafia. Excuse me. It's like the mafia coming in and and causing a problem. Say, oh, you got problems, and then and they, but they're creating the problems, and say, oh, we'll fix the problem for you. That's 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 mob shit, right? You don't you can't do that, right? So, so, so Trump has got some kind of shit going on right now. They got some kind of some kind of cyber cyber attack and whatever. It's war. It's it's just the, it's economic warfare. It's cyber warfare. Uh, it's war. Right? The Trump is still instigating war. They haven't killed anybody yet, but they are about to. And here's Bolton. Iran shouldn't mistake U.S. prudence and discretion for weakness. Right? So so. To, to Bolton, right, that's Trump's main guy, foreign affairs, you know, uh, uh, saying that, oh, no, no, we're going to, you shouldn't mistake our not shooting you for weakness, right? Because that's what this guy's all about. He's a warmonger. They want to, they wanna, you know, bomb, cheat, and steal, right? just like Bolton, uh, just like uh, uh, um, the other guy, Pompeo. All right, so it, it continues on. But who said it? And now I, I have to, you know, now we have to go into the future, right? Who said it? Who told us about Mossadegh? Who told us about the, the tragedy of regime change war? Certainly not Trump, because Trump doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Trump is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, he's a, he's a brute and a, and a in, in my view, kind of a shallow historian who doesn't understand any of this stuff. He doesn't, he doesn't know, but somebody did. I remember in 2016, you remember this guy? Right, here we go. Now, I think an area in kind of a vague way, or not so vague, where Secretary Clinton and I disagree is the area of regime change. Look. This is Bernie Sanders, 2016, running against Hillary Clinton, probably late somewhere in the primary where they were already, you know, the 30 Democrats already cheated and decided that Hillary Clinton despite the roaring crowds by, uh, around Bernie Sanders and the clear winning of the primary, they gave it to Hillary Clinton. But here he is explaining to the former Secretary of State who overthrew Gaddafi and, you know, uh, she's, he's explaining the tragedy of regime change wars, the identical policies of, of Trump right now. There's no real difference. Maybe the neocons are a little more, more aggressive, but Trump is certainly not that far different uh, in his policy, in his, in his example in Iran right now. The truth is that a powerful nation like the United States, certainly working with our allies, we can overthrow uh, 
dictators all over the world. I'm sorry you have to look at Hillary Clinton. She doesn't say anything, so you're, you're good. And God only knows Saddam Hussein was a brutal dictator. We could throw, overthrow Assad tomorrow uh, if we wanted to. We got rid of Gaddafi. But the point about foreign policy is not just to know that you can overthrow a terrible dictator. It's to understand what happens the day after. And in Libya, for example, the United States, Secretary Clinton, as Secretary of State, working with some other countries, did get rid of a terrible dictator named Gaddafi. But what happened is a political vacuum developed. ISIS came in and now occupies significant territory in Libya and is now prepared, unless we stop them, to have a terrorist foothold. But this is nothing new. This has gone on 50 or 60 years where the United States has been involved in overthrowing governments. Mossadegh back in 1953, nobody knows who Mossadegh was, democratically elected prime minister of Iran. He was overthrown by British and American interest because he threatened oil interest of the British. And as a result of that, the Shah of Iran came in, terrible dictator. As a result of that, you had the Iranian revolution coming in, and that's where we are today. Unintended consequences. So I believe, as president, I will look very carefully about unintended consequences. I will do everything I can to make certain that the United States and our brave men and women in the military do not get bogged down in perpetual warfare in the Middle East. If I Wow. Wow. He's like a prophet. I know. I know. He's just an old socialist. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Right? So, so there is, there is a, a politician running today that actually understands it. There's also Tulsi Gabbard, but why, why settle for a newbie when you, when you've got the original, right? So this is, this is, this is, um, a, you know, a politician saying it right now and knew it in 2016 and told everybody about it. So, so, so again, just to recap, who is Muzadek, right? Why, why, is it, why is it relevant to understand history? This history of Iran, as you watch the, the manufacturing uh, consent for war with Iran under this president, right? Why is, it a, why is it interesting to understand? Because when a leader rises up in, in, in the ranks and is, is democratically elected by his people, the oligarchy gets pissed off, as you know, as was then, is now. Right? The oligarchy gets pissed off. The monopoly, the oil, the oil cartel gets pissed off, and then they create the illusion, create the false flag that he's a he's a a, a terrible a, a, a tyrant. He's a you know a dictator. Right? All the things that they're doing in Venezuela right now. Uh, are a great example, but but also what they're doing again in Iran, and I don't know. I just I just I'll leave it at this and say, if the United States in this country, our people have never been overthrown by a foreign power. We've never been heavily influenced to the point of, um, well, I, I mean, arguably we are influenced by multinational corporations now. I, and we do have the power to fix that. And we could fix it in one election cycle, in my view. We really could. If we can, not just the president, but if we could, if we can get a, a president in the bully pulpit to voice it to the people and then switch out the House and the Senate with actual people uh, that are for the people and not for the donors, the donor class, I think we could, we could clearly switch... Um, switch out this government in one in one pass. And what is that? To restore, <clears throat> to bring income and wealth and equality back into, uh, <clears throat> uh, to, to break out of this, this, this grotesque level of income and wealth and equality and bring power back to the people. So I've talked about that a hundred times. I'm not going <laughs> to reiterate it. So, so today, today we salute you. We remember you, <clears throat> Mohammed Mozadek. Mohammed Mozadek. Let's see, how Mossadegh. you say your name? How you say your name? Mossadegh. Mohammed Mossadegh, thank you very much for your for your historical perspective. Can I become a Patreon of this channel or make a one-time contribution to PayPal? And don't forget to subscribe. Marcus Conte reporting.